um, you're welcome to this aspect of IGCSE Geography Paper 4 uh, where we'll be looking at how to carry out river investigation river investigation so quickly the content we'll be looking at in this lesson we are going to be looking at river characteristics choosing a field work site safety uh, precautions while going for a field work um, measuring river gradient depth width velocity and uh, rate of infiltration so quickly um, and we need to understand certain characteristics of a river because it's those characteristics we are going to describe how to carry out river measurement on them now Basically, uh, rivers normally flow from upstream region down to down to the downstream region, and there are certain things that changes. Now you find out that as you move from upstream to downstream, the discharge increases, um, the width of the river increases, the depth of the river increases, the velocity of the river increases, and the load quality, that's the amount of load carried by the river increases as you move from upstream to downstream. But as you move from downstream to upstream, you find out that the load particle size increases, uh, the channel bed roughness increases, and the slope angle or the gradient increases from low downstream to upstream now so some of these features of a river are what is here the discharge the depth the width of a river so the width of the river is the distance between two banks of a river and the depth is the distance from the surface of the water down to the bed of the river and so we're going to be looking at some of these features and how they have been measured but before that um, what are the criteria needed or you need to look out for when choosing a field work site now when you want to choose a site for field work first you should check the accessibility of that area now from the school or from a road now why so that it will be easy for you to transport your equipment two you have to check your safety that's the strength of the current if the current is flowing very fast it is not advisable you go to such site for a field work exercise then you should also check the river in case of animals that can endanger your life so you don't do field work in such site then also avoid sharp rocks as you can see so you check because you can easily slip off and fall also you should not carry out field work in areas that have been impacted by human activities so areas that you have things like dams and the rest because the data collected will definitely be altered then we should also look at um, watch out for areas with waterfalls and rapids because the turbulent flow will definitely affect your reading so next we we'll look at safety on the field work site so what should you go with how should you go there in order for you to be safe first suitable clothing like your footwear uh, walking boots should be good you should always go in groups um, you should wear sunglasses to protect your eyes from the sun rays you should also check weather forecast uh, for the day to know if there will be rainstorm uh, and at what time to help you to decide if you go to, if you if you should go to the field or not um, next uh, do not enter river after a heavy rainfall and you should always carry your mobile phones so you can call if you are detached from the group okay the first measurement we're going to be looking at is how to measure a river profile or a river gradient now the major instrument you need to measure this you need a tape measure you need a ranging pole you need a string you need clinometers and you need a recording sheet now the steps are quite simple so if you look at this i told you earlier that the river starts from an upstream region and it moves to downstream downstream so what you have is as you move from upstream to downstream you can see that the gradient or the profile of this river changes it moves from a steep slope down to a gentle slope so how is this being measured it's simple so you need this set of instruments so the first thing you need to do is to use tape measure to measure certain distance apart so you can get a tape measure possibly you measure 10 meters apart then students will hold ranging poles at either end so you have a student here holding this ranging pole there are two ranging poles at either end 
then make sure the poles are vertical very important make sure they are vertical there and put string at the same height between poles so you mark same point same height between the poles should be the same then student hold the clinometer you now use a clinometer like what you can see this student doing here hold the clinometer next to the top at certain height that you've marked on the ranging pole then you cite the other ranging pole at the uh, at the other top there uh, where you put the string initially then you take your reading uh, in degrees so students use clean ranging pole to measure the reading in degrees then you should now repeat along the bed of the river so after this you can measure another 10 meters you repeat measure another 10 meters you repeat that's how you're going to move from upstream region to downstream that's how you measure the river profile now if you do that properly and you plot it on a graph you find out that it will now look like this diagram beneath it here next is measuring the depth of a river that's how deep the river is from the surface of the water down to the bed now this point here is the bed of the river and this is the surface why sorry this is the surface why you have two banks this is one bank this is uh, the second bank so what will happen is this place a meter roll into the river until it touches the bed so that is what they are doing here this is the meter rule place into the river until it touches the bed of the river now make sure the ruler is upright and is vertical then you record the distance between the river bed and the surface of the water using your meter rule now you should do this at regular interval between the banks so you see from this bank to this bank you do it at regular interval so you can see as it is at this diagram below so you do it across the width of the river at regular interval then you add the depth together and divide by the number of recording so if you do one two three four five six seven eight nine so you add all the depth you've measured and divide by the numbers of recording to actually get the depth at that particular point of a river then um, measuring the width of a river how do you measure the width so to measure the width of a river you can use put two ranging poles at the bank so that's what the students are doing here you can drop a ranging pole at one bank another ranging pole at the other bank then you place a measuring tape that's what they're using a measuring tape across the channel from one bank to the other and measure the distance between the two ranging poles now you should make sure your tape is kept stretched out and the poles must be directly across at what 90 degrees to each bank so they must be directly across each other then you repeat a different side along the river to measure the width and how the width changes so you find out that the width increases as you move from upstream to downstream now this is um quite simple and what it is is how does how does the um width and depth or why does the width and depth of a river increases downstream so we've why will it change why will it increase now the first reason is there is an increase in discharge or volume of flow of the water so it helps to there will be more erosion of the bed and the banks so it makes it to increase in size now presence of tributaries that joins the main river the bed and the bank of the river are eroded the channel eroded by erosional processes abrasion corrosion hydraulic action the bedrock may be weaker so there is increased rate of erosion and specific human interference with river channel can also lead to this river increasing in size increasing in width and depth across from upstream to downstream now how do you measure river velocity there are two ways you measure the velocity of a river now the first method is that you use what is called using a floater use a float now so it's also quite simple now the first thing is you need instruments such as a stopwatch your ranging poles you need your meter rule to measure distance between ranging poles uh, so this is it your tape measure 
So what you do is you put poles, you use your tape measure, you can measure 10 meters apart and put poles 10 meters apart from each other, fix, which is a fixed distance along the river. Then you use a tape measure to measure that distance. So that distance should be like 10 meters apart. Then you put a float, possibly like an orange peel. That's what you have here. And um, you start your stopwatch. So you measure the time taken for this orange peel to move with the flow of the river from this ranging pole to this ranging pole. Remember, they are all, what, 10 meters apart. So you measure the time with your stopwatch. So you stop your stopwatch when the float passes the end point. Once it passes this end point, you stop your stopwatch. Then you repeat method at points across the river. Then you repeat at all site that will now give you the velocity of a river using this method now the second method you use is using a flow meter second method is the use of a flow meter to measure how fast the velocity of a river so this is also quite simple now this is how a flow meter look like uh, a flow meter normally have what is called a propeller uh, so what will happen is you put a flow meter below water surface and make sure the flow meter is facing upstream because the river flow from upstream downstream now make sure it face upstream so the propeller must face upstream where there is no obstacle then you read on the digital scale here to see the speed of the river so you repeat the reading at different points across the channel and to get the velocity then lastly here is um, how to measure infiltration rate so how do you measure infiltration rate it's simple uh, infiltration is the movement of water from the surface uh into the soil so like here we have the instrument we have water here we have um, a measuring perforated measuring tube at, and we have the soil then we have a stopwatch so simple measuring tube is placed or inserted into the soil then you pour water into the measuring tube and you measure the point where the water is so you measure the height of the water in the tube every minute so you start your timer or your stopwatch so you know the time it takes for that volume of water inside the measuring tube to infiltrate into the soil so thank you next we are going to look at how to measure pebble size um, in both rivers and coasts